Here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation Thursday night. Knicks, CP from Knicks Fan TV here checking in. And on tonight's episode, we're going to recap the Tom Thibodeau opening press conference. We're going to talk about the return of Mike Woodson. Mike Woodson is on his way to the Knicks and Tom Thibodeau's coaching staff. And we're also going to talk about a critical, critical sophomore year for R.J. Barrett and what the Knicks can do to ensure his success. So salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Phone lines are up 657-383-1509. All right, so the 31st coach in Knicks history, Tom Thibodeau, was officially announced today. The Knicks had a uh, private Zoom conference call with the media. No, we were not invited. We at Knicks Fan TV were not invited, but it's all good. We, we still uh, got to see the press conference later on this evening. And uh, a couple takeaways. You know, when these press conferences occur, you know you're not going to get anything too revealing. You know, it's going to be very PC, very po- politically correct, typical PR answers. You know, the coach is excited to to coach the Knicks. It's a dream come true. He remembers what the Garden was like when it was in its heyday. He wants to bring that back and win a championship. All that is great. I think that the, the primary takeaways to me was uh, the fact that he would welcome using the G League to develop the young players. You know, that that was something that we spoke about at length over the course of the season when it came to guys like Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr. You know, when you have all these veterans taking their spots and, and taking up the playing time, why are they just sitting on the bench? And while we might not have all the answers, it was always a question whether it was Fizdale or Mike Miller uh, as far as were they going to utilize the G League just to get these guys some playing time, still run that same system, but just to get them, keep them loose. And what Thibodeau said was they're, they're going to utilize the G League in terms of uh, if the young players aren't playing, yes, he wants them to be playing in games, uh, but they will welcome using the G League for their young players. And I think that's going to happen because, like I said, with the cap space that the Knicks have to play with and Tom Thibodeau coming in here, how they develop this roster with veterans uh, to supplant, uh, not supplant, but to complement R.J. Barrett and Mitchell Robinson, the two pillars that they're going to focus on. There's going to be some young players that are not going to see, see the court. You know, Kevin Knox is how how is Kevin Knox's playing time going to look depending on what they do in free agency and the draft? You know, um, they they always have that glut at the point guard position. How are they going to utilize the G League for that? So it's going to be very interesting um, to see how they go going forward. He was also asked about, you know, the typical knocks on Tibbs. He was asked to address those load management. And what he said about load management was um, it, it's going to be uh, position based and role based. He pointed to guys like a LeBron James, like a James Harden, those guys that are averaging damn near 38, 39 minutes a game. Well, he basically said, you know, common sense, he's not going to have his best player uh, on the bench while uh, the opposing team's best player is out there running amok. So it has to be managed um, game by game situation, case by case basis. But as he said in previous interviews, there's other ways to to manage uh, the load for certain players, such as practice. How often they practice, how long they're practicing for, do they practice on back to back nights, so on and so forth. So I think he's he's keen on uh, improving in that aspect. They also asked him about his offensive philosophy. Um, again, that was a knock on Tibbs. Is his system outdated in today's NBA? And, uh, you know, he looked at it as as. Um, he looked at the game evolving and, and now he points to, um, systems where a lot of teams are using called the five out, you know, having all five players out on the court, being able to space the floor, even the center being capable of shooting a three. So we'll see how that bodes for, for one Mitchell Robinson, who's been out there trying to run a muck on the perimeter and will Tibbs really utilize him in that fashion. But it seems like he, again, it seems like he is. Um, cognizant of um, adapting to the times and what Tibbs was doing on his on his time off. He was visiting different camps. We know he was with the Clippers. We know he was with the Miami Heat, visiting different camps to see what see what was going on, talking to the coaches. 
And so Tibbs is, is really trying. You could tell he's trying to adapt. And like I said, he went on his PR tour this this past um, season, went to the Sports Analytics Conference. You know, that was by design. That was by design. Tom Thibodeau is not known for uh, embracing analytics or hadn't been known for that. And so he went on these uh, uh, to these press conferences, to these conferences and had other press conferences, went on first take. And again, trying to clear up his name, trying to clear up his reputation uh, uh, and, and trying to show people that he's he's with the times. So I, I applaud him for that. Again, time will tell and the proof will be in the pudding and in, in how the roster shapes up. But we'll see. Iller in the chat says a press conference seems scripted. Yeah, I mean, listen, again, you, you're not expecting much, right? Everybody came in and said the same thing. I mean, Perry was practically reading from a script. Rose said the same thing. Um, you know, Thibodeau said he, he was he was he's honored to, you know, one of the things that drew him to the job was working with Leon Rose Worldwide West and getting to know Scott Perry. But that, that's also important. You know, it's also important to have all three of those guys together, because like I said, where, uh, you know, Leon Rose is concerned, he has to compose his front office with experience. You know, again, this is a different animal. Yes, he's come in with some young, some young cats as well with Brock Aller and, and his staff. Uh, but he's also fortifies his, his front office with vets, Scott Perrin, Walt Perry. Walt Perrin, Scott Perry as well. And so with the relationship that he and Thibodeau had, like I said, I think it it this is the coach that you want for Leon Rose. Right? It might not be the coach that you want for the team, but this is the coach that you want for Leon Rose because they already have that relationship. You know they're going to be working together. You know they're going to be motivated together to putting the best product on the floor. And like I said, with the five-year deal that they gave him, Perry, uh, uh, Leon Rose, he's going to be much more patient with Thibodeau and seeing this thing through. I'm not saying Dolan will be, but I'm saying uh, uh, Leon Rose will be. Leon Rose will be very much so motivated to see this thing through with Tibbs. Um, Tibbs is five keys to the game. Defending, rebounding, limiting the turnovers, hitting the paint. I mentioned this to you guys on the last episode. Um, there's a there's a podcast out there where Thibodeau was on BJ Armstrong when he goes more in depth on his offensive philosophy. And a lot of that is stressing to get into the paint and creating um, good three-point shots is what he's been saying. He said it on a Michael K show as well today. Creating good three-point shots and 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 uh, getting the driving kicks. So that bodes well for R.J. Barrett. And I also feel like whether it's draft, free agency, or trade, the point guard that he's looking for is also going to have those same characteristics. So I don't see um, I don't see Frank's role as a starting point guard. I think Frank will likely be a backup. It's going to be interesting to see how Tibbs utilizes him. But I I would expect to see Frank's uh, paint dribble penetration increase under Tibbs. It's going to have to. It's going to have to because this is what Tibbs is going to want from his guards. He's going to want that dribble penetration and, and breaking down the defense. Um, in terms of coaching, the league is going to allow the Elite Eight, the eight teams that are not in the bubble, they're going to allow them to, to participate in some sort of all-season training camp in August. So that'll be the first time that Thibodeau will get a chance to uh, link up with the team. And start to instill some of his philosophy. I still think they'll be able to meet with each player individually. And that's what he wants to do. They're going to meet with each of the players individually. And at some point, organize individual workouts. Now, Scott Perry's also headed down to Orlando tomorrow. As we know, the league is allowing uh, scouts and representatives from the Delete 8 to um, go scout down in Orlando at the NBA restart. All right. So that is pretty much that with the, with the press conference. I mean, listen, 
Hey, they did a Zoom press conference, right? Everything is everything is uh is is streaming now. Everything is digital. They should have brought him here. They didn't want to bring the Knicks fan TV, so they did their own thing. All right, no problem. They didn't invite us. No worries. We'll still cover it. So that so that was Tibbs. And again, he stressed working with uh he stressed working with RJ and Mitch. Those are your cornerstones. Those are your pillars. R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson. Leon Rose stressed it. Thibodeau stressed it. These are our guys. This is who we're going to go to war with. It's how they're going to build a team. R.J. and Mitch. So, again, you know, you, you look at you look at R.J. And you, and you look at Jimmy Butler, how, how Thibodeau utilized Jimmy Butler uh, with Minnesota. I even look at Jimmy Butler this year. Jimmy Butler averaged about 16 drives a game this year. RJ around nine. Uh, so I think that's one area where Tibbs is definitely going to unleash RJ, especially on those uh, um, side pick and rolls. You know, especially on those side pick and rolls. So um, interesting, interesting developments today. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. How many people we got in here so far? We have all uh, 434. We started a little bit early today because I know the NBA restart uh, has already kicked off. We have Jazz and Pelicans going on right now. And then we have um, we have Lakers and Clippers going on later on tonight on the nightcap. A couple Clippers not playing. I don't think Montres Harrell's playing, Lou Williams, uh, nor Patrick Beverly. I think those guys are all out. So we'll see how that goes there. And uh, so far, so good. That court looks pretty good. Court looks pretty dope that they're working on. And so that's that with the restart. Now, in other news, the return of Mike Woodson seems to be imminent because earlier today, before the press conference, uh, it was announced by Shams of The Athletic that Mike Woodson will be joining the Knicks in an unknown capacity, but it, this has to be Thibodeau staff. I don't see it being any other uh, option. This is what we've been hearing. Uh, Ian Begley told us that one of these head coaching candidates was going to be signed to the bench, and it's Mike Woodson, folks. Mike Woodson returning. How do you guys feel about that? I know some of you guys wanted Woodson to be the head coach, uh, but now we're hearing is that Woodson will be um, on the staff. So, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Listen, one thing you could point to with Woodson uh, and that 54-win Nick team is that that team was number one in the NBA in three points uh, made and attempted and fifth in three-point percentage. So, Woodson was definitely uh, letting it fly out there. And clearly, we're going to need the, the horses to do so. It's going to be interesting to see what Woodson's role is going to be on the staff. How how will he and Tibbs, you know, coexist? Is it going to be on the defensive end? Is it going to be in the offensive end? It's going to be very interesting to see how they coexist. Uh, one of the things that, you know, they made clear, a statement to, that they made clear on the press conference was that uh, what Leon Rose was saying in regards to Tom picking his staff is that he had full autonomy. Right, because that was also a question that we had over the last two weeks was, is this an organizational thing, them dictating who's going to be on the bench, or is this a uh, is this up to Tibbs? Is Tibbs going to be calling the shots in terms of com uh, uh, composing the bench? And basically, they said he's got full autonomy. And, and like I said, I expected that. I, I wouldn't expect... You know, Leon Rose to be dictating to Tom Thibodeau who he should be bringing on to his staff. I mean, this is a guy, a well-accomplished coach that, uh, you know, doesn't need to be told who to bring on the bench. I'm sure they'll have ideas. I'm sure Perry or or Rose or Perry will have ideas. But uh, at the end of the day, this is Thibodeau's call. And I think, you know, if, if Woodson's here, Thibodeau wants Woodson here. I do think Mike Miller will also be retained. They haven't announced anything officially yet. Um, there's been talks, Rick Brunson, Steve Pop, Steve Popper of Newsday is saying Rick Brunson could be a name. So let's see how the staff shapes out what each individual role will be. Another positive for Woodson, for the people who feel like Thibodeau is not 
going to handle player relationships well with the young players. Woodson maybe brings that balance, right? All the guys that we interviewed on this show, whether it was Felton, Rasheed Wallace, Jamal Crawford, uh, um, Kenyon Martin, a shameless plug, by the way. Those are four nice interviews. Check it out if you haven't. But all those guys mentioned Woodson to being a player's coach, but at the same time, somebody that could uh, hold players accountable. So maybe he brings that balance to Thibodeau's, you know, hard-nosed approach, right? So maybe he brings that dynamic to the team as well. So let's see. Let's see where it goes. Uh, let's see where it goes. But like I said, I think Thibodeau's done a good job of trying to repair his image, trying to show the naysayers that, you know, he he's with the times, he's 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 ready to adapt to today's game, whether it's load management, whether it's offensive scheme. Let's see where it goes. The proof will be in the pudding. The naysayers have a right to be skeptical. I'll say that. The naysayers have a right to be skeptical. This is the Knicks. They haven't done much right in the last 20 years. So, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Roster is going to tell all. Let, let's see what happens. But uh, let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones and hear from um, CP the Artist. What's going on, bro? You just stole my phone for the last point you made, man. Well, it, it, it was my show, because so I can't steal I, your thunder. You stealing my thunder, is bro. That, you know what? I'm going to be cautiously optimistic about everything. I wasn't crazy about the hire, but at the same time, I'm going to like let let them do what he's going to do. You know what I mean? I'm going to give him a chance, a fair chance. I would love to see what they're going to do with the roster. And that's going to be the determining factor of anything, that that uh, Nick's success was going to be. I'm not going to be all honky dory and, and, and happy about, you know, anything yet, but we'll see what happens. That's it. That That's that's all you can do, man. See what happens. Like I said, the naysayers have a right to be skeptical about this whole thing. They have a right to be skeptical about this whole thing. I think on the, on the plus side, you have a guy who is uh, a lifer in this sport, a student of the game and a teacher. And I think that's, that's what Tibbs is going to bring. And this, we, like I said, we need that foundation. We need a structure. Forget, forget, you know, playoff and championship talk. Let's just put a foundation in place, a foundation in place. You know, another good article you guys should read is, um, Berman had, uh, he interviewed, uh, Steve Clifford, coach of the magic. On, on Thibodeau and, and, you know, Steve Clifford also from that Van Gundy tree, they all came in together with Van Gundy on, on his staff when Van Gundy took over for Don Nelson. You know, Steve Clifford raved about Thibodeau in terms of how he will establish um, good habits on, his, on the defensive end, how he's going to get these guys to communicate, to connect, how, how Thibodeau prepares for the star player shutting down your A game all the time and having to force you to go to your plan Bs and plan Cs. How Thibodeau goes after attacking a star player. Very good article you guys should read in the New York Post. Very in-depth um, um, comments from Steve Clifford and and, uh, and other resources in terms of Tom Thibodeau's approach to the game. So, like I said, you know, the players have to buy in. It's up to the players to buy in. And you know, uh, world worldwide West, my guy, not not the guy that works for the Knicks. When he called in last week and and he compared it to, um, he compared it to the Giants situation. Some of you football fans, you Giants fans in here, when Tom Coughlin came to the Giants, you know he had a tough time getting earning his respect with the players because he was known as a no nonsense coach. Came with a drill sergeant approach, and that tuned everybody off. You know, Strahan, Tiki Parber, those guys were, were tuned out until Strahan and Tom Coughlin met, and Strahan had to let him know, like, listen, it's, it's all right to be tough, but you also have to show that you care. So, 
that is what Tom Thibodeau is going to have to do. It's all right to be yourself. Be that no-nonsense guy. Be tough. Be a disciplinarian. All of that. But you also got to meet some of these guys in the middle. You know, the RJs and the Mitch. Meet some of these guys in the middle. That's why it's going to be important to have guys like a Taj or one of your veteran leaders kind of be that bridge between the coaching staff and the young players. You know, somebody that's going to pass on that message, help the young players execute, but at the same time, work with the coach to, you know, manage those relationships. It's a balance. It's definitely a balance. And like I said, if Tibbs wants to keep this job, if he wants to stick around, then he's going to have to adjust, and I think he'll do that. Lambo, what's going on? Yo, what's good? How you feeling, bro? Go ahead with your point. I'm chilling. Um, yo, I'm, I'm optimistic, man. I keep on hearing uh, things getting better and better and better. That might work the thing that you just uh, laid on us. Um, that was good news. Um, from a foundation standpoint, like I feel like he's gonna finally give us some celerity. So, uh, as it comes to like uh, us getting things together, taking it step by step, it's gonna be a slow process. But even at the ground floor, I feel like we're finally going to have a, a good structured team. And then with the Whitson thing, we'll be able to speed up the process on offense. But definitely on defense, I think we'll be rather right formation and something to stand on because then I wasn't really over, all the way for the higher. But I actually kind of think it's better for the long haul because RJ's not going anywhere. And I don't think Mitch is going anywhere uh, either. And I think he's going to give them core values that. RJ already has. Like, RJ is the type of person I feel like if you tell him to come 10 times, he's going to be there every single time and, and give you his best. Yeah. So, um, I'm just really optimistic with everything, bro. Hey, if you're a Knicks fan, that's all you got, man. What else can you be? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I said, you can be pessimistic too, but if you're still rooting for this team, uh, all, all we have left is hope, man. All, all we have left is hope. So... We'll see what happens and, and how they uh, build this thing. Again, it's in the roster. It The proof is going to be in the roster that they put together. They have a lot of cap space. They have a lot of draft capital. What are they going to do to complement the skill sets that Mitch is going to bring on the defensive end? What are they going to do to help space the floor for R.J. Barrett so that he has room to operate in the paint and bully ball his way to the hoop or be able to kick it out to a reliable three-point shooter. You know, and we're going to talk about that in a, in a second, um, how, how they can do that. Um, let's go to back to Long Island, Raw Hebrew Remnant. What's going on, man? What's up, c How you doing? Thanks for taking my call. What's going on, bro? Um, real quick, three things. First off, the uh, Thibodeau wasn't my first choice. And yeah, I think it was, as for many of the Knicks fans. But I'm very happy with the hire. Um, I don't need him to change. I need him to be what he is. If that means running guys into the ground, we're going to be a good, a better team. Secondly, um, R.J. Barrett is the best guy for him to work with, even though he's a young guy. He, he worked hard on defense, and he's a high IQ player. So I think Thibodeau will work with him well. He does, even though he's a rookie, well, not he'll be like a first-year guy, but, I mean, he'll be young. Thirdly, um, there are no, as far as I can see, there are no immediate impact superstars in this draft. So even if we got LaMelo Ball, I don't think he's going to be playing a lot of minutes for Thibodeau because he's going to commit a lot of turnovers. He's young, and his defense stinks. So I don't think there's anybody in this particular draft that's immediate. you got a couple of guys like an Obi Toppin, maybe a Vassal, um, that, that can be a good rotation piece in a, in a Thibodeau game right now because Obi's going to be 23 when he comes out to play. But he's a grown man. He's not like an 18-year-old kid. So aside from that, I think people are expecting too much of this draft for the Knicks. I think we're going to get a guy that we're going to have to develop, which Knicks fans are not into. <laughs> and before now, the team, the office, the front office and the management wasn't into but I hope they'll be into now. But you got to be patient. I like the guys we got. We do need to add some vets. I like a Bertans. If, I, if we can get him, I'd be happy. Or maybe a, a, a nice wing that's a vet. Uh, we'll see what happens. But CP3, too expensive. I love him. 
I think he'd be good, but too expensive. Forty million is too much. We're going to have fifty million in cash space. We could really do a lot. Uh, I just want to know your thoughts. I'll hang up now. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, listen. You know, let me unfreeze my my mouse here. Um, as I've been saying in the draft, you may get a star. You may get a role play. This draft is such a crapshoot. This draft is such a crapshoot. You know, the most interesting thing about this draft is if you go, if you put them in tiers and you put them, let's say you put uh, LaMelo, Anthony Edwards, and Wiseman in that top tier, right? The guys with the highest ceiling. Outside of Wiseman, you know, LaMelo and a Edwards aren't exactly the best fits alongside RJ Barrett. But. With these guys with the highest ceiling, I still think you would have to go with the best player available if you're in that top three range. Now, you look at other players, I think Inokoro is a guy who's a, who's a prototypical Tom Thibodeau player. Excellent defender, uh, excellent in the paint, uh, efficient in the paint. Not a great shooter, not a great free throw shooter. So again, with him and RJ, you get Inokoro and an RJ you're very limited in terms of shooting and free throws. And those are two things. You know, free throws are another high efficiency uh, score that you want out there. And right now, RJ is shooting around 67% from free, throw, from free throw line. That's not going to cut it. So he's got to improve in that regard as well. So Nakoro would certainly be an interesting piece. A vassal, I think, would be an interesting piece, especially if you're looking from the 6 to 8 range. I spoke about a Cole Anthony. I think a Cole Anthony could come into play around a six to eight range. Where does a Denny fit into it? Where does a Halliburton fit into it? Good defender, good three point shooter off the catch and shoot, but not a guy that's going to get into the paint as aggressively as maybe a Thibodeau would like. So I'm very intrigued to see if a Halliburton's on the board when the Knicks pick. Do they still go that route? Do they still go that route? Uh, what else? I think Obi. I think Obi is probably the most NBA ready. You know, day one to hit the ground running. Another intriguing pick. Would they go that route? Uh, he also said CP3 would be expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a costly contract, man. But you know, like I said, I think CP3 is a table setter that uh, that we need. So. We'll see how that goes, but I, I agree. It's got to be at the right price. CP3 has got to be at the right price. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Uh, if you're new in the chat, leave me a hashtag new, and I'll shout you guys out. Uh, let's see who we got in here. How many people we got in here? 566. So to everybody in here, um, I want to shout out Robert Parrott, sends a fight out super chat. He said, youth need to take a leap with Tibbs or make a break. Uh, you know, it's interesting because like I said, when Tibbs said that he would embrace the G League again with the cap space that they have, there's going to be more veterans. It's going to be more vets unless they're going to trade, you know, trade some cap space for for a piece. There's still going to be more vets on this team. It just may be a different composition with Thibodeau having a tendency to lean on his vets. How much playing time are your young players going to get outside of RJ and Mitch? We know RJ and Mitch are going to be the pillars. So that's their minutes are going to be there. As long as Mitch can stay out of foul trouble and be disciplined, he's going to play. RJ is going to play. That's, that's not a worry. It's your incoming draft picks, your Kevin Knoxes of the world, your Franks of the world. Is DSJ still going to be here? I don't think so, but how does he factor into this? It's going to be interesting. And so, like I said, I think they will use that G League because I don't think a lot of these young guys are going to get much burn. They're going to have to earn it. Like Robert said, they're going to have to earn it. Um, Delsky in the chat sends a $10 super chat. He says, I feel like RJ has a physical attributes, toughness, and grit to be all defensive second team while under Tibbs. Certainly possible, man. RJ's a worker. RJ's a worker, high IQ player. And um, that's one thing I, I have no no issues with. I think Tibbs is going to get the best out of him. I like that pairing. Roheben Remen says, well, he called in, but he said, Tibbs wasn't my first choice, but an excellent hire. There are no immediate game changes in the draft. 
Money Mark sends a super chat. Money Mark, appreciate it. $15 super chat. He said, Woody will be a great compliment to Coach Tibbs. But coaching, let me just find the rest of this comment. But coaching um, and management has to be willing to create a system and be patient with the youth. And, and you know, again, I think they did also, they emphasized the development track um, in terms of the direction of this team. And Mike Vorkanoff, also of The Athletic, also asked Thibodeau, because Vorkanoff had written an article um, a few months ago really um, commenting on other teams in the league like the Raptors, like the 76ers, having separate staff strictly develop, um, strictly devoted to player development. You know, staff that's not on their bench, just a strict separate player development group. And he asked Tibbs if that's something that he would implement. And Tibbs seemed like he was open to it. You know, and that Tibbs acknowledged that that, that was something that he saw along his travels during his off time when he visited each team, understanding that some teams do have a strictly developmental staff of younger coaches um, that can get out there and 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 uh, play with the players, you know, and help them work on their weaknesses. You know, you look at what like a Chris Brickley's doing and, and, and guys along that caliber, a guy like a uh, David Zenon who was on the show. You know, those t- those type of player development coaches who could get out there and actually get on the court with the players. So, um, we'll, we'll see. Again, we will see. Roster will tell all, man. Roster will tell all. So, to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's shout out um, some of our new viewers. Let's shout out... Let me find the hashtag news. Um, Dedaman0241, welcome to the chat. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Salute to... What we got in here? Nick Flair says, hashtag vet. Salute Nick Flair. Iller says, shout out to Mari Stoudemire winning the championship overseas. Yeah, Mari and uh, Denny Abdia win the Israeli championship final. Um, Stat actually had a good game. 18.7 rebounds, took home the MVP. Uh, there was a point where Maccabi Tel Aviv was ready to give that game away. Stat put him on their back and and uh, and seal the deal. Fabian, Fabian Full, hashtag new. Welcome, Fabian Full. Derek Baylor, welcome, Derek Baylor. Sergeant Robert, 2764, welcome to the show. Tion Henry, welcome, team, hashtag new. Mike Jones uh, says, hashtag new. Who? Mike Jones. Welcome, Mike Jones. I feel like Mike Jones has commented on a couple videos before, so maybe this is your first live. But either way, um, welcome to the show. And like I said, I started a little bit earlier because I know the restart is going on. You guys want to watch these games. I'm here to talk next, though. All right. Uh, and for you new guys, remember the show's available in audio podcast format as well. All every relevant link to our social media, our podcast, our promotions, everything is in the video description. And also, if you click on the eye icon at your top right, you'll see some of the uh, past episodes. Um, the Jamal Crawford interview. If you haven't seen the Jamal Crawford interview, check it out for you for you in the chat that have seen the Jamal Crawford interview. Uh, let me know a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. It was an excellent interview. Shout out to JC for the time. Um, so speaking of RJ, Zach Lowe caught some heat from the Knicks faithful. Zach Lowe caught some heat for uh his all rookie team selection. Zach Lowe caught some heat for his all rookie team selection, leaving RJ off the first and second team. He went with Zion, first team Zion, John Morant, Brandon Clark of Memphis as well. Kendrick Nunn had a good year with Miami Heat. Eric Pascal of the Warriors. Second team, he went with PJ Washington. Tyler Hero, the Miami Heat, Kobe White of the Bulls, came on strong second half, Terrence Davis of the Raptors, and Rui Hachimura of the Wizards. What'd you guys think? Were you were you guys mad that RJ was left off of the list? What, what'd you think about that? I mean, listen, you know, these writers will have their reasons. Um, 
RJ's numbers are certainly up there. Statistically, primary statistics is certainly up there with the Rooks. You know, Lowe's defense was that his advanced statistics weren't up there. Um, his shooting numbers weren't good. And, and so he left them off. I think a lot of these guys will do that because they know that the Knicks fan is the most engaging fan on social media that will generate engagement, that will retweet these and blast them for a blasphemous list. But in all in all honesty, yes, his his um you know not being on the on the team is a little sketchy. But at the same time, I think if you look at some of the numbers, you know, he, he has to improve in RJ. He's got to improve. 43% on twos. Even worse at the three. What's his numbers at the three? Um, 32% from three. 61% free throw shooting. That's not going to get it done. So... You know, a lot of you want to point to, um, you know, Tibbs and Randall and, and Peyton kind of stymieing RJ. But at the same time, 61% from the free throw. Listen, those are your free points. You got to you gotta improve on that. Got to improve on that. So uh, we know that's, that's RJ's main focus he has to improve um his shooting no doubt about it has to improve his shooting and his finishing at the rim because he can get into the paint he's muscling everybody he's bully balling like i said he's averaging nine drives a game i think that will uh i would expect to see that increase on their tips and and uh but he's got to finish and he and if he's going to draw the contact He's got to he's got to earn it from the stripe. It's free points. And that's what Tibbs wants. He wants you in the paint. He wants you getting high efficiency shots, creating better threes, but also getting free throws. Most efficient points you can get: dunks, layups, free throws. So that's what RJ needs to work on. That's what he needs to work on. Now, how the Knicks go about helping him improve, they got to get better shooters, man. You got to space the floor with him out there, man. No doubt about it. You got to space the floor out there. You can't have him running into, you know, 10 guys in the lane because Julius is in there, Mitch is in there, and and, and Peyton's in there. Peyton's man is in there. So we got to get him to a point um, where he's got some reliable firepower out there and how we do that free agency let's start with free agency one of my main targets is gonna be davis bertans sharpshooter out of the washington wizards organization listen this is this is one of the guys right here davis bertans is shooting 42 percent from three on eight attempts has a great uh, uh, percentage with defenders in his face. And, you know, listen, he, he's going to command a lot on the open market. And I think the Wizards will be keen to keep him. Kind of lagging on the live stream, so I'm waiting to catch up on that. Well, I think the Wizards will be keen to keep him. But Bertans is, is, is a sharpshooter, man. This this is one of my targets. Top five targets, no particular order. Davis Bertans is definitely one of them. Um, secondly, Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant out of the Nuggets. Now, the Nuggets traded a, uh, a first-round pick for Jeremy Grant. So, hard to see them letting him walk in free agency. But um, 40% three-point shooter, but a great defender. Jeremy Grant, very versatile defender. Can guard damn near one through five. As you see, he's damn near flying out the gym, got the bus his knees up. This is a Tom Thibodeau type of guy. This is a Tom Thibodeau type of guy. And, and I think the Knicks should be looking to throw some money at. He's making $9 million this year. 
going to be interesting to see what his market value is and whether the Nuggets keep him. You know, Nuggets have a lot of depth now with Porter Jr. stepping up and Bull Bull stepping up. How does that factor in um, to, to their free agency plans? But a Jeremy Grant would be an excellent, excellent option for the Knicks. Now, you guys also know how I feel about one Joe Harris out of the Brooklyn Nets organization, 43% three-point shooter, a guy that can play on both sides of the ball, scrappy defender as well. I think he'd be an excellent, excellent uh, pairing with R.J. Barrett out there on the perimeter. And again, give him um, some space to operate in the paint. And somebody who's a low-usage High efficiency type of player. That's Joe Harris. Another option, Danilo Gallinari. Now, a little too injury prone for my liking, but I think Danilo, you know, listen, he's, he's a prototypical stretch for. He's been here before, he knows what to do. And a, and a guy that's, uh, he's going to shoot that three. He's going to let it fly. But again, a little bit too injury prone. I'd rather go Bertans. I'd rather go um, even Jeremy Grant. But listen, if they can't uh, find anything in the draft or they don't make any interesting trades, might have to consider it. Might have to consider it. You need shooting with RJ. And what are they going to do with Julius Randle is, is a million-dollar question. Because Julius is just not spacing the floor uh, as he did with the Pelicans in his last season. Where you, you trust him and RJ building some chemistry. So uh, Danilo is another prospect who I would be looking at in free agency to help R.J. Barrett out. And right now, his numbers, if we pull his numbers up, he's shooting uh, 40% from three, 43% overall, 19 and five on the season, 88% free throw shooter for Gallo. So those are Gallo's numbers. So we said Bertans, we said Jeremy Grant, we said Gallo, Joe Harris, and um, who's in the Fred Van Fleet camp? Because I listen, I think it's you're gonna have to overpay for him for sure, and I'm not sure uh, how Toronto feels about it. Doesn't seem like they're gonna be willing to let him go. But Fred Van Fleet will certainly fit the mold for Tibbs. I think I think Van Fleet will fit the mold for Tibbs. Three, uh, great three point shooter, solid defender. Dribble penetration. Gets into the lane. I think he's averaging around um, 14 drives per game. So Van Fleet's got to get into that lane. The problem is he's not a good finisher. Problem is he's he's in the bottom 10th of the league in terms of uh, finishing within the restricted area. You know, a lot of Van Fleet's points are coming from the three-point line. But very little in between. And not to, you know, not to cherry pick, because he's certainly a, a good player overall, but certainly an area that you want to see him improve on. But nevertheless, a player that can play off ball uh, and, and certainly fit with R.J. Barrett's skill sets, Fred Van Fleet. Like I said, the only issue is um, what his market value is going to be. And you got to figure, I got to figure Toronto is going to keep him as, as Kyle Lowry's uh, replacement. I got to I gotta think that. A guy like Fred Van Fleet came up through the system, won a championship with them, knows the coach, you know, has that chemistry with Siakam. I don't see them letting Fred Van Fleet go. But when you look at the undersized point guards that have had success under Tibbs, you look at a DJ Augustine, you look at even Nate when he was there, uh, I think Fred Van Fleet would, would, be, uh, would be great. I think he'd be great on the Tibbs. But again, it, are, you gonna, are you willing to pay him that type of salary to be a borderline, you know, not really an all-star, borderline all-star, if that. That's the tricky thing about Van Fleet. Not so sure. Not so sure. So what do you what do you guys think? What do you what do you guys think? If 
Van Fleet. These are my top five free agents to pair with R.J. Barrett. Davis Bertans, Jeremy Grant, Fred Van Fleet, Danilo Gallinari, Joe Harris. No particular order, Joe Harris. I left Christian Wood off because, like I said, I'm not sure where they're going to necessarily go with uh, with uh, Randall. At least you know Jeremy Grant, you're paying him to probably be a backup. Christian Wood, you're going to have to pay him a starter's money. Do you trust Christian Wood's numbers? He's averaging 40% from three, but uh, is it a good sample size? Is it a good, a good enough sample size for you? Somebody in the chat said, uh, bring back Mook. Let Randall go and bring back uh, Marcus Morris. Let's see. Who you guys like? Bertans, Jeremy Grant, Fred Van Fleet, Danilo, Joe Harris. Joe Harris. Somebody in the chat said they didn't like uh, Van Fleet as a playmaker. He's he's improving. You know, he's improving. Not your prototypical floor general, but he, he's certainly improving in that regard. Let's look up uh let's look up Van Fleet's numbers. You know, like I said, uh uh three point shooting, excellent. Defense, excellent. Van Fleet shooting uh averaging six times, seventeen and six for Van Fleet on the campaign. So what do you guys think? So to everybody in the chat, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's go uh, back to the phones and hear from um, DJ Cash. DJ Cash, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, CP? How you doing? Man? Good, good. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Um, and in reference to you know the players you met, you 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 talked about, um, I would say the majority of them probably are Thibodeau guys. Uh, I like Grant. You made reference to Bertans. He got to work on his defense. Yeah, his defense shooting, isn't well, solid, but his yeah. shooting is off the charts. Um, Van Fleet, I'm going to say no, and this is the reason why. You made reference to his finishing because in order to to get that shooting, you got to have a guard that's able to get to the hole and kind of create some havoc for the defense. So he's got to be able to finish. So we need a, a penetrating guard that can get to the hole and finish. And so if those shooters are there, then that makes Joe Harris look good. That makes Bertans look good, Grant. So I would say no to, to, to Van Fleet. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, people may feel otherwise. And then the other thing with Van Fleet, you're going to have to pay him yeah. because, you know, Toronto ain't just going to give him away. No. But the other players, uh, definitely. Now, the only other player I had an issue with was Gallinari because, like you said, he's injury pro. Yeah. Now, I'm going to throw out another player, too, mm -hmm. that you're, pro you're probably going to frown, but if you're going to put Gallinari out there, you might as well make, uh, mention Kevin Love because he can still yeah. shoot. I mean, he's older, you know, I'm not as injury prone as, as Gallinari, but, yeah. you know, maybe that could be a possibility. I mean, you never know. Um, but um, definitely, um, you know, those players could, could, could work. And also, too, um, there may be some players out there in the draft, you know, that uh, Perrin and those scouts may come up with that, you know, have some potential that will, yeah. you know, come up and, and can fill in and over time. So, for sure. I mean, we'll see how it goes. But thank you for, thank you for the time. For sure, man. Thanks for the call. And, and listen, you know, as you said, yeah, the draft is certainly a possibility. I'm just saying, you know, again, you got to keep in mind they, they got money that they have to spend out here. So... There's going to be one or two uh, acquisitions that are going to be made. Some guys may be retained. You know, like I said, I think Taj will be back. I think Reggie Bullock will be back. That's $14 million right there. What they do with Alfred Payton, I'm not so sure. Ellington, I'm not so sure where they go there. Portis, uh, what the beat is saying is that they won't bring him back at $15 million a year. So you're going to have some money coming off the books that's going to have to be replenished. Now, with Kevin Love... Yes, that would be a good veteran presence. Yes, a floor spacer. That would be a better fit than Randall. I'm just not sure where, you know, and not to knock his, his deficiencies mentally, but where was he at with, in, in terms of coming to a rebuilding situation? You know, you saw some things with the Cavs this season where 
he really, you know, threw that team on the bus. And, and I'm not so sure. I think Kevin Love, let him go to the Lakers. Let him go to the Lakers and go go hang out with LeBron and, and go, you know, play for something to win. I don't think this is a, this is the right situation for him here. But other than that, I, I agree with your points and certainly agree with your concerns on a Van Fleet. Um, not not my first choice in terms of who to bring in in the point guard, but I'm just saying he would be a guy that that I think would would uh, would certainly gel with RJ. Um, but good points. But good points. I, I'm I'm out on Kevin Love. I just don't I just don't trust him in this situation. The closer of the night is going to go to my guy. Of course, the closer, Jay Boogie. What's going on, man? Yo, life is good. I say life is good. I'm talking about the Nas life is good. <laughs> Not the future life is good. How everybody doing? Hope everybody healthy and safe, man. Just want to shed a little, you know, a love amongst the system of the, of, of, the, of the new thing we got going on. I salute Leon Rose, man. He took his time and built what he wanted to build. We got a real foundation, you know what I'm saying? And Thibodeau. It's 50-50 with me with him, but I deal with it because I know what we're getting. We're getting somebody that really care about basketball, really feel like he got something to prove, and he really wanted to be in New York. It ain't like when we got the last coach, we only got him because we thought he can bring players. He there right there, he going to build up some players, man. So, you know, let's just give our props to what we got going on. I'd rather go ahead and just keep building up the young guys and get ready for 21. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really looking too many for veterans for this year because the big crop coming out in 21. Yeah. If we can build up our young our, our young core and get everybody ready to go, you know what I'm saying? Then some guys may want to come and play with them young guys, sort of like when Kevin, I mean, sort of like yeah, when Kevin and, and Kyrie went to Brooklyn, them guys was ready and they was proving we got guys here that need to prove themselves, you know what I'm saying? And they need space to prove themselves. They don't need no more of them guys that was on the team this year getting all in their way. They need time to play, lead time to grow, and need time to be on the court, you know what I'm saying, and grow together. And I keep saying that Mitch and RJ, that's our Joe Kim Noah and our Lou Ardeen. Those are our two new players from the old Chicago Bulls with Thibodeau, man. That's our one-two punch, man. I love y'all. I'm on this Kawhi Leonard right now, man. See what's going on, man. Return to the NBA tonight, man. Just yes, showing sir. some support and love, man. Peace. Jay Boogie, appreciate you, man. And yeah, that's all. I'm about to go uh, finish eating some dinner and watch these games as well with y'all. But we had to talk Knicks, man. And we had another great show. We got almost 700 people in the chat joining us right now. Had to start a little bit early because I wanted to uh, keep in mind of the restart. I know you guys want to watch these games, but I'm with Jay Boogie, man. We, we got to let these young guys come together and gel. Obviously, from what the Knicks are saying, this thing is going to be built around uh, RJ and Mitch. And again, we'll see, man. We'll see. You know, if Tibbs is here, I'm glad he's here. But now it's time to get this roster together and 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 take it from there. You know, somebody in the chat asked, uh, salute to Louis Luck, sent a fight out Super Chat. He said, how many games do I think Tibbs can add to a team like the Knicks? Again, it's all on the roster. They won 21 games this year, 17 last year. That was a four-game increase. Yes, they didn't get a chance to play uh, out the rest of their games. They were 21 and 45, right? So that's 66 games. They missed the last 16. People think Miller, if Miller coached the whole year, he would have gotten them to 30. Can they get to 35 next year, depending on the roster? Just being realistic. You know, you can't expect a home run. It just year over year like that. It's, it's, it's baby steps. This team, the team, you are, you are what your record says you are. So, can Tibbs get them? I, I, my, my preseason prediction or hope was thirty. They made it to twenty one and didn't get to play sixteen games. So, say they would have won, say four or five more games, if that. That's twenty seven. See, can Tibbs get them in thirty five? What do you guys think in the chat? What's a realistic number? I got to see what the team looks like first, really. But I, I, I think 35 is a good estimate. Big Surge sends us a super chat. He says, experienced coach needs experienced point guard. Pick up all your one-year deals and trade them with Knox and Frank for Paul. Expiring deals and young players. OKC will take it. No picks. So Surge is on the CP3 wave. See how it goes. See how it goes. If it doesn't cost us any picks, I'm with it. Uh, Mr. Williams sends us a super chat as well. Salute to Mr. Williams. And he says, um, 
trying to pull up the super chat here. So to Mr. Williams, definitely appreciate the super chat. Can't find it, but oh, here it is. Um, is there a more Tibbs type player than Bullock? Um, I th- I like Bullock. Like I said, I like Bullock. He's he's gritty. He's smart. He plays tough. And he should be a reliable three-point shooter and a cheap, cheap option for them. $4 million a year, you know, they, they got him on a good deal because he was coming off that neck injury. So let's see what Bullock brings to this team in year two because I think they will keep him. I, I think they will keep him. You know what I mean? So that is the story there. Salute to everybody for tuning in, man. Once again, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. CP from Knicks Fan TV on the check-in. Salute to all the mods that tune in, that help out all the time. Dave, appreciate Knicks Fan TV. Dave for pulling all the highlights together. Remember, this show is available in audio podcast format, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Amazon Alexa, and Stitcher. We appreciate all of the super chats. Like I said, all that money goes to paying, covering the overhead to run this show. But you can also support us for free by hitting that thumbs up, sharing these videos, leaving comments in the chat, leaving comments on the videos. We've been getting a lot of comments on these videos. We try our best to, to read and we, we read all of them, but we, we can't. Sometimes we just can't respond to all of them, but we try our best. But continue to leave comments. Definitely appreciate it. And, um, yeah, man, as usual, this was a recap of the Thibodeau press conference. Mike Woodson back. What do you guys think about Woodson being back? And uh, who are some pieces, free agency, draft, trade? Who are some pieces that you feel like uh, we need to really compliment RJ Barrett out there and give him a fair chance to succeed with these Knicks? So I'm out of here. Appreciate Park City Dion for the super chat. Stephen Fox, take care. Uh, Reaper Man, definitely appreciate it. You guys take care, and I'll catch up with you uh, in the 